In the city of Belfast, Ireland, now Northern Ireland, William Thompson was born on June 26, 1824 at 2125 College Square East. His birthplace would become one of the first cinemas in Belfast named the Kelvin Picture Palace in 1910 and is now, just very recently, an office complex called the Kelvin. His mother, Margaret Gardner, died when William was just six years old and his father, James Thompson, had a rural upbringing in Ulster, Ireland and a very sharp acuity for mathematics, was professor at the University of Glasgow for 17 years. Thompson excelled in school and graduated from the University of Cambridge in 1845, attaining the rank of second wrangler. The wrangling system at Cambridge involves intense mathematical competitions where students solve complex problems to gain points, and its significance lies in how it sharpens their problem-solving skills and mathematical understanding, which often leads to notable achievements in the attainee's future careers. After graduation from Cambridge, Thompson spent a brief time in Paris where he was mentored by Victor Reynaud. Reynaud was best known for his precise experiments on specific heats of gases, which contributed greatly to thermodynamics and for discovering deviations in the behaviors of real gases, or Reynaud's law. He also improved scientific instruments like thermometers, barometers, enhancing measurement accuracy. It was Reynaud's observations which would be essential for Thompson to derive his conclusions for an absolute temperature scale. After his stay in Paris, Thompson would return to Glasgow in 1846 where he was given the chair of natural philosophy, the 19th century term for what is now known as physics, at the young age of 22. Throughout Thompson's long career, he would be offered many posts and positions across the world, but he would remain at the University of Glasgow for over half a century until 1899. One of the first concepts of an absolute lowest temperature came some 200 years before Thompson with the chemist and physicist Robert Boyle. In his 1665 paper, New Experiments and Observations Touching Cold, Boyle discussed the existence of primum frigidum, or primary or supreme cold, and if it was a substance or simply an absence of heat. The idea of an ultimate temperature was furthered by the French physicist Guillaume Amantone in 1703. Amantone, using an air thermometer, proposed that the lowest temperature possible would be when air's pressure drops to zero, estimating this at approximately negative 240 degrees of what would later be known in the Celsius scale, remarkably close to the figure Thompson would arrive at over 140 years later. In 1848, when Thompson would write his paper on an absolute thermometric scale, Different temperature scales existed, such as the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scales. Thompson saw a need for a universal absolute scale that would not rely on specific substances like mercury or the expansion of gas. Thompson's proposal was influenced greatly by Sadi Carnot's work, which he references in his paper on the efficiency of heat engines. Carnot had theorized that the efficiency of an ideal engine depended on the temperature difference between its hot and cold reservoirs. Thompson recognized that the temperature differences needed to be independent of the properties of any particular material. Thompson extended Carnot's ideas to propose that if you could cool a system infinitely, you would eventually reach a point where all thermal motion ceases. Thompson states the following in his 1848 paper saying, when we reflect that infinite cold must correspond to a finite number of degrees of the air thermometer below zero, since, if we push the strict principle of graduation stated above sufficiently far, we should arrive at a point corresponding to the volume of air being reduced to nothing, which would be marked at negative 273 of the scale. And therefore, negative 273 degrees of the air thermometer is a point which cannot be reached at any finite temperature, however low. This absolute scale proposed by Thompson in 1848 was the way to measure temperature starting from the theoretical point where all molecular motion stops. This scale used the same unit intervals as the existing Celsius scale, but shifted the zero point to negative 273 degrees, marking absolute zero as zero degrees. For some time, the scale was referred to as the absolute Celsius scale as it retained the degree divisions of Celsius while being rooted in the concept of absolute zero temperature. In 1954, the scale was officially adopted by the General Conference of Weights and Measures, and in 1968, 
the name was formally changed to the Kelvin scale in Thompson's honor. The name Kelvin itself would come close to 50 years after his paper when Thompson would acquire the title Baron Kelvin of Largs. In 1892, when he was ennobled in recognition of his work in thermodynamics and his opposition to Irish home rule, with him personally choosing Kelvin for the nearby River Kelvin, which flows close to his University of Glasgow's main campus at Gilmore Hill, where he conducted much of his work, and Largs serving as his home location. Kelvin would also make significant contributions to the development of the second law of thermodynamics. The formulating of the second law of thermodynamics began to be developed independently by both Kelvin and the physicist and mathematician Rudolf Clausius in the 1850s, both building off of Sadi Carnot's work with heat engines, which Carnot conducted in the 1820s. The second law of thermodynamics can be stated in several ways. Kelvin expressed part of the second law in his 1852 paper titled On the Dynamical Theory of Heat. His statements or axioms were two, with the first stating, it is impossible by means of an inanimate material agency to derive mechanical effect from any portion of matter by cooling it below the temperature of the coldest of the surrounding objects. And the second, which is similar, it is impossible to derive mechanical effect from any matter by cooling it below the highest cooling temperature sure. of the surrounding objects. This is a rephrasing the idea that no cyclic process can completely convert heat into work without some energy being lost as waste heat to a colder reservoir. It also implies that a perpetual motion machine of the second kind, i.e. one that converts all heat into work without any losses, is impossible. As mentioned, Kelvin was deeply influenced by the earlier work of Carnot, who introduced the concept of the Carnot engine, which is a theoretical heat engine that operates in a reversible cycle between two temperatures, converting heat into mechanical work with maximum theoretical efficiency. Kelvin would extend Carnot's work using the framework of his temperature scale, giving a clear definition of efficiency in heat engines. Rudolf Clausius's statement of the second law of thermodynamics in his 1854 paper states, heat can never pass from a colder to a warmer body without some other change, connected therewith, occurring at the same time. The Kelvin and Clausius statements, which both underpin the second law of thermodynamics, would later be shown to be equivalent, as a violation of one is a violation of the other. Kelvin would later extend the implications of the second law to the entire universe and suggested that if the universe were a closed system, eventually all energy would become evenly distributed as heat, leading to a state of maximum entropy or disorder where no more work could be performed. This concept became known as the heat death of the universe, where all thermodynamic processes would cease and the universe would reach thermodynamic equilibrium. The transatlantic cable was a massive engineering project aimed at establishing telegraphic communication between Europe and North America. There had been shorter successful cables run under large bodies of water such as the English Channel Dover-Calais Cable of 1851, but nothing as ambitious as the cable over the Atlantic Divide. The first attempt to lay the cable was in 1857 with the backing of American businessman Cyrus West Field and the Atlantic Telegraph Company. The plan involved laying a telegraph cable between Valencia Island in Ireland and Hart's Content, Newfoundland, Canada. After multiple failed attempts, the first successful message was sent in 1858. However, this cable of 1858 was short-lived and quickly failed after just a few weeks of use. Kelvin would add several significant contributions to the cable project, one being his work on the law of squares. Kelvin showed that the retardation or delay of the current pulse in a cable is proportional to the square of the distance the current travels. In simpler terms, if you double the length of the cable, the retardation increases by a factor of four. This relationship had significant implications for the design and performance of the long distance telegraph cable. The longer the cable, the more pronounced the delay in signal transmission. To limit the effects of this delay, it became crucial to ensure that the cables used for the long distance had low resistance and high conductivity. Thompson emphasized that the higher quality copper and larger conductor diameters were essential for maintaining the signal strength over the considerable distances involved in the Atlantic crossing. 
Thompson's mathematical work would later be refined and added to by Oliver Heaviside in the 1880s, who would take into account resistance and line losses in devising the telegrapher's equation. Kelvin also invented the mirror galvanometer, which was used to detect weak signals sent across the ocean. This instrument used a lightweight mirror attached to a coil of wire that would deflect in response to electrical current, reflecting a beam of light onto a scale to indicate the strength of the signal. The sensitivity of the mirror galvanometer allowed it to detect faint electrical pulses, which significantly improved the reliability of communication over the long distances. Kelvin's work helped see the successful completion of the transatlantic cable in 1866, which was a groundbreaking achievement in global communications and allowed for close to instantaneous messaging between Europe and North America. This ended the total reliance on slower methods of communication, such as ship, significantly reducing the time needed to send information across the ocean from weeks to mere minutes. For his work accomplished on the overseas telegraph, Kelvin would be knighted by Queen Victoria the same year of its completion in 1866. Over his long career, Kelvin would publish over 600 papers and held over 60 patents. One patent in particular was a type of analog computer used for predicting of the tide. He also was an early pioneer of electric light and in 1881 made his home in Glasgow to be one of the first houses in the world to be fully brightened by electricity. Lord Kelvin William Thompson spent his final days at his home in Netherhall in Largs, Scotland. By this time, he had retired from his position as professor of natural philosophy at the University of Glasgow. In the late stages of his life, Kelvin suffered from declining health, particularly due to a severe cold that weakened him in the winter of 1907. And on December 17, 1907, he passed away at the age of 83. Following his death, Kelvin would be buried at Westminster Abbey. Thank you for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to offer a like.